joined with Fabrizio Romano. Fabrizio, thank you for being on the show. And let's thank get, you. yeah, yeah, thank you. And let's get straight into things because I've got so much I want to ask you today. First things first, Eric Ten Hag, his future. A lot of people are very undecided on this topic and there's a lot of different reports coming out whether Ineos want to stick with Ten Hag or whether they want to move on to a different man in the summer. In your opinion, do you think Ineos want to stick with Ten Hag or do you think he, he, he will be let go at the end of, end of the season? Well, what I'm hearing is still the same, that Ineos want to give time to Eric Ten Hag. Ineos want to see how the performances will be in the final two months and then they will discuss internally. But all the conversations that they had in the last two, three months with Eric Ten Hag have always been positive in terms of discussions, in terms of planning for the future. They're happy on how he trusted some young players like Kobe Maino and many others. So... In the general idea is positive, but at the end is also about results, and this is why the timing the next two uh, months will be absolutely crucial to understand the future of Eric Hag. So we can't be 100% sure about Eric Hag staying because it's Ineos deciding is new people coming into the club. We know that this board structure will change soon, and this is going to be also important. So they want to take their time before deciding, but at the same time, they are prepared to wait, to take their time and to keep discussing with Eric Hag about the future project. So at the moment, I don't have any information on Ineos already deciding for Eric Hag to leave the club. They are still keeping all the options open and having positive conversations with him. In terms of if the results didn't go the way that they wanted to and they did want to make a change, do they have a short list of managers that they are looking at to potentially bring in if Eric Hag does leave? More than a short list is not a proper short list because they are not having any interview or direct discussion with uh, other managers from what I'm hearing. So we are not at that stage. But obviously they have some managers they appreciate. They were already into football with Nice and other opportunities they had in the past. So they already had some managers in mind in terms of people they appreciate, uh, people they know very well, people suggested from agents or any other people involved into football to Ineos. So obviously they have some names that they know very well. But I think in case they decide to part ways with Eric Hag, it will be an important process. It won't be something already decided now. It's maybe involving other names that we don't see regularly in the media in these days. So nothing is going to be decided now in terms of new coach, from what I'm hearing. They want to give time to Ten Hag, and it also means that they are not going to do any interview now or in the next days or weeks. If this is something that we'll have to check, I think, around uh, May, end of May, probably. And then just the names Deserby, Nagelsmann, Southgate is a big one, and Graham Potter, who's just actually you know, turned down the Ajax job, keep coming up. Are they all names that you'd expect to be on, on that shortlist? Yeah, some of them, yes. Uh, others, at the moment, I'm not aware of, of contacts. For example, uh, for sure, Ineos, when they were at Nice, they considered Graham Potter a very good candidate, but it doesn't mean that he's a candidate for Manchester United job. And same for Southgate, he's a person they really appreciate, a manager they really appreciate. We know the connection with Dan Ashworth, but at the same time, it's not something already decided or a direct contact with Southgate. So I think um, all the rappers at the moment are too advanced in terms of what we see in the media and it's not something that concrete yet in terms of discussions with, uh, with Ineos. So at the moment it's really early stages. And then there are names like uh, Deserbi, like Julian Nagelsmann. These are kind of managers who can make sense for the project they have at Ineos. But again, I can guarantee that they are not speaking to them at this stage. And also timing will be important, especially for Nagelsmann, because Nagelsmann has a proposal from uh, the German Federation to extend this contract before the Euros. So if May United want to act and go for Nagelsmann, they have to be fast. Otherwise, you will sign a new deal at uh, the German Federation. So this is why at the moment I'm not hearing there is something really concrete and is also in the running for Bayer job. Yeah, really... Really interesting stuff because obviously right now it looks like Ten Hag is, is is the guy for now, but obviously that door is open. So it is interesting to see how things go towards the end of the season. And then I also wanted to ask you about, before we move on to transfers, about Marcus Rashford because he committed himself to United earlier this season with the statement that he brought out to, to Manchester United fans. But he does keep getting linked to, to PSG. And there was also talks about... Him, his relationship with Eric Ten Hag. Where is Marcus Rashford at? Is he definitely going to stay at Manchester United in the summer? I can guarantee the relationship with Eric Ten Hag is a very good relationship. So they have obviously no no problem. Sometimes can happen that mm -hmm. you can be not so happy with the performances. It's part of the game. It was not an easy season for May United in general, not just for Rashford. So it can happen. But at the same time, I'm not hearing of any negative uh, 
relationship between Tenag and, and Rashford. If Marcus Rashford is at Manchester United today with a new contract, is also thanks to Eric Tenag, who trusted him since day one. So the relationship is very good. And at the moment, again, of Paris Saint-Germain, I keep saying those links, but what I'm getting is that someone at Paris Saint-Germain appreciates Marcus Rashford in terms of board. This is the reality, but they've not started any concrete contact. The only negotiation was there when Mauricio Pochettino was the manager. It was Pochettino who was really pushing to have Marcus Rashford at Paris Saint-Germain in the past. Now it's a completely different situation. PSG are not working on the deal right now, and the situation remains very quiet around uh, Marcus Rashford. So I am not sure that Marcus Rashford is going to leave Manchester United, and I can guarantee that as of today, there are no concrete discussions with Paris Saint-Germain. Thank you for that. Just wanted to get a clear update on that. So thank you for that. Next up, I wanted to ask you about strikers. We spoke about this multiple times on the shows, but we are getting into April now. So I was wondering if there is any names specifically coming up yet and what are we generally looking for in a striker? What sort of price range are we looking at as well? Yeah, we are still at early stages about that in terms of price and also in terms of skills. There is still an internal discussion and honestly, I understand that because before attacking any of the options, you also have to understand what's going to be the market, what's going to be the domino, the final price for some players. So Manchester United are still inquiring around, meeting with agents, trying to understand how it's going to be the strikers market around and then they will make a decision on who is the player they want to sign. As I already mentioned here last time, they still want to take their time to decide whether they want to go for an experienced striker or a young striker. This is going to be, I think, an important decision also uh, because they invested big money one year ago on Rasmus Hoylund. They keep trusting Rasmus Hoylund for present and future. Uh, they believe he has huge potential. So to pick the right striker to compete with Rasmus Hoylund is going to be important to find the right balance in that position. But at the same time, I'm sure that at the moment they've not decided anything yet in terms of who is the top target. There are some names. We already mentioned some uh, of them, some players they are following. For example, they've been in attendance multiple times for Benjamin Cesco, but he's also in the list of Chelsea and Arsenal. Uh, they've been monitoring the situation of other players, including Joshua Zirze at Bologna. He's doing very well, but it's not going to be an easy deal because he's expensive. And at the same time, May United are not so convinced to go for that kind of super young striker. Maybe someone more experienced is is needed. Ivan Toni could be a possibility in terms of opportunity on the market. We are sure that Ivan Toni will be on the market, will be one of the names to follow in the summer transfer window. But at the same time, United have not started any concrete contact to start a proper negotiation. So this is why I think it will take some time. I wanted to ask you about Evan Ferguson because this name is come up, but I think it's basically impossible considering the price tag that Brighton would put on him. But there was a report saying that Ineos were a big fan of his. Is Would that be off the table this summer? Yeah, not just Ineos, but also people in the scouting have always been big fan of Ivan Ferguson. They believe that his potential is huge. So I'm sure that this could be one of the names and one of the players they really appreciate, Ineos included. But again, as you mentioned, it's about the price tag. And at the moment, Brighton are not even giving a price tag for Ivan Ferguson. This is the point. You remember the Caicedo story last summer? We spent months discussing about Caicedo, and then only in August they started indicating a price tag for Caicedo. The problem between Caicedo and Chelsea, Brighton and Chelsea for Caicedo, was about the price tag. That Brighton were not indicating any price or telling them, OK, this could be the right fee to sign the player. So imagine now, imagine in April, imagine with Brighton still not clear about what's going to happen with Roberto De Zerbi. It's very early and they are not discussing any price tag yet. So this is why for my United, I think it is one of the reasons of what I said before. It's difficult to pick your favorite striker now because you don't know the price tag, you don't know the domino, you don't know if some of the clubs will put their players on the market. So it's still early for that. But he is someone who's right up there on the yeah. list. Yeah, he's one of the players they appreciate for sure. And even before Ineos joined, uh, obviously, both uh, as co-owners the club, uh, they were really appreciating him in the scouting department, believing that he could be a perfect player for, for Man United. Interesting stuff. I actually really like him as well, personally, as a player. I think he's got a lot of potential. Next, I wanted to ask you about the centre-back situation. I mean, what's most likely to happen there? We saw yesterday Kambuala had a really good game, a, a young player that's coming into the team. Varane has actually been really reliable this season when he's been fit. We've seen Martin su suffer with injuries. I wanted to ask you one Will Varane leave in the summer? I think it looks like he's going to, but will Varane leave? And will we go for a Tadebo, a Branthwaite? Where are we at on the centre-backs? Yeah, my expectation of Varane is for him to leave because as of today, we are in April. There are no discussions on going with Man United to extend the contract. I saw some reports in the recent weeks 
about a contract offered based on appearances, also to change his salary. But from what I'm told, the player has not received anything. And same, obviously, for his camp, his agents. So at the moment, it's completely quiet between May United and Varane. So let's see if the club maybe will change the position in May and offer him a new deal. But as of today, they are not talking or discussing of a new contract. So there is a concrete possibility, I think, for Rafa Varane to leave Manchester United. And in terms of centre-back, um, the names you mentioned are on the list for sure. Uh, for Todibo, I'm told that the price tag will be around £40 million. Pounds. This is what Nice are expecting for Jean-Claire Todibo in the summer transfer window. May United are obviously informed because of Ineos, the connection is, is there, but there are also other clubs interested. So Todibo remains one of the players in the list. I would include, obviously, Brian Twaite remains one of the players they appreciate, but in this case, they're waiting for Everton to communicate what's going to be the price tag in the summer, what's their position on Brian Twaite. So we have to be uh, patient on that one to understand what May United will decide to do as soon as they have news from Everton. And then I think there will be other names too. I think it's not just these two. There are other players they are following. For example, May United are well informed on the release clause of Clayson Bremer at Juventus. The release clause is going to be valid in summer 25. But from what I'm hearing, there is a gentleman agreement between the agents of Bremer and Juventus in case this summer a proposal in the region of the release clause. So something around 60 million euros, 60, 65, is going to arrive to Juventus this summer. In that case, Juventus could be prepared to discuss and let the player go. So there are many possibilities uh, for, for that position. We still have to include also Antonio Silva from Benfica, probably the most expensive option at this point. So this is why it's going to be complicated. But he's a player that May United have been scouting for a long time. Uh, I think it's going to be difficult for Tapsoba, for example. Now with Xabi Alonso staying, they will try to keep all the stars. So I think Tapsoba is going to be a complicated one. But all the other names we mentioned, Silva, Brian Twitt, Bremer and Todibo, for sure are players who are going to be on Manchester United shortlist. Would you say for Sadibo that it's most likely he will leave in the summer? And I think for 40 million, Man United have to kind of explore that. But do you think it is most likely he will leave Nice? Yes, my expectation is for him to leave Nice because already one year ago he was in position number two for Manchester United in the list to replace Harry Maguire after Benjamin Pavard. Then Maguire ended up staying at the club. In January, Todibo was prepared to leave to try a new opportunity. Also with Tottenham, really interested. But in that case, Nice didn't, didn't want to sell the player in the January transfer window. So it was almost impossible for Tottenham to, to negotiate with them. Now, I think also for the player, it's time for a new opportunity. It's time to play for a top, top club with all respect to Nice. And this is why the expectation also of those close to Tony is for him to leave in the summer transfer window. I think with the Ineos connection and the price of 40 million and, and with Man United's financial difficulties this summer, I feel like that deal just makes sense. But um, we'll have to see on that one. Also, I wanted to ask on Gleason Bremer quickly. There was reports yeah. coming out that apparently Juventus could be interested in Mason Greenwood. Is that a deal that could happen? Like, you know, Man United, a sort of swap deal where Man United go for Gleason Bremer, maybe there'd be an additional fee included. I don't think Greenwood Juventus go will there. go. I don't think Juventus will go for Mason Greenwood. From what I'm hearing, they have different options in those positions. It's not a priority for them. So at the moment, I'm not aware of direct contest between Juventus and okay. Greenwood. Uh, but um, in terms of Bremer, Bremer for, for May United, I think is not linked to Greenwood. It's a, it's a separate possibility that May United will will consider. I still believe he's a really underrated centre-back. He's a fantastic player. Uh, so, for example, the reaction here in Italy when uh, we reported about the release clause was kind of shock between Juventus fans. They were not expecting for that kind of cheap release clause for a player like Bremer, who is probably worth way more than, uh, than 60 million euros, 65 million euros. So, I think that could be an interesting opportunity for many clubs, but obviously Obviously, Man United will decide who is the best one and how many they want to sign. Yes, I wanted to ask you now, in the midfield, Casemiro is looking off the pace at the moment and he's on 300 grand a week right now. It's, it's a lot for, especially considering Ineos getting the wage structure down. Ericsson Casemiro look like they're quite likely to go. Amrabat won't be made permanent. I wanted to ask you, will is it looking like Casemiro will go in the summer and who would Man United be looking at to replace him? Yeah, Man United, I think for the midfield, will wait to understand how much will be the budget because basically the priority positions in this moment are obviously uh, to do something in the centre back position. Then we know about the left back. We already mentioned that Man United will invest there, and I keep saying that there will be an important signing there. So, in terms of talent, they want someone who can be reliable, who can be ready to compete in that position. And then obviously the striker. We already mentioned about that. So, there are already three important positions to cover in the summer transfer window. I think in the midfield is about how much. They will have 
in, in terms of budget. Also, how many players they can sell in the summer transfer window. So we have to be kind of patient there because they can appreciate players around Europe. Just to give you some context, a player like João Neves at Benfica is a player they love because they've been scouting him for months. They believe he's going to be a fantastic player in the future, but he's a really expensive one. So I'm not sure Manchester United will have uh, that kind of budget to go there, pay the close and sign the player from Benfica. It's going to be really complicated, especially if you have to cover three more positions with financial fair play issues. So it's going to depend on how much they have available in terms of budget to, to spend. But in terms of um, outgoings for Casemiro, still waiting for opportunities. I think they are quite open to consider opportunities for Casemiro in the summer transfer window. Let's see if from Saudi they will present a proposal because interest is there since long time, but May United never received a concrete proposal for Casemiro to accept or turn down in the past. So let's see if they will return with a concrete proposal this time. And for Ericsson, there will be a direct talk between Ericsson and, and Ericsson Hag from what I'm hearing. It's going to be close to the end of the season. It will be really honest, as always, between two, uh, obviously, manager and, uh, and, and player who respect each other. So there will be a fair talk between, between them and we will see what they will decide to do. But for May United and midfielder, I think they will wait to understand how much they have left in terms of budget before going for a specific player. OK, good update there. You spoke about quickly about a left back. Is there any names in that in that area? I think I, I saw a report saying United want to spend around £20 million on that. Is that accurate? And do we have any names there for the left back? No, what I heard is that the budget is not decided yet for that position. Okay. It's, not, it's not guaranteed that it's going to be £20 million. Uh, it can be even more than that if they find the right opportunity or less if they find another one. So they will take their time. I think we're not at that stage of the decision, but we are at the stage that they internally decided to go for a left back for sure, no matter what happens with Malasia and with Luke Shaw. So the idea is to sign a new, a new left back. And for names, we have to be a bit patient, but I think really soon. They, they are starting to find the players they, they like to, to have kind of list, and uh, we will be able to share soon. And then quickly, 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 Elise, he was spoken about a lot. Is he still a priority on that right side for Man United? Yeah, he's still one of the players that they are considering to, to sign in the summer, yes. I keep saying that he's not yet that advanced yet, so we are not yet at the stage of close or in advanced negotiations, but he's still one of the players that is really appreciated internally, uh, as I was mentioning for Toribo even before Ineos' arrival, and he remains one of the players that they really, really like, so I think he would be a candidate for the summer for sure. Thank you, Fabrizio. Great updates there all around. And we can't wait for the summer transfer window. Hopefully there's some there's some good transfers in there and you'll be on the channel to tell us all about them. So thank you. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. And see you soon. Thank you. Have Ciao. a good week. See you later. Bye, bye, bye. Well, everyone, that was Fabrizio Romano with all the latest transfer news. I've got to say straight off the bat, if you, are, if you weren't watching from the start, please go and rewind and watch it from the start because... I'm going to be honest, reading between the lines, and obviously Fabrizio didn't outright say Eric Ten Hag is going at the end of the season, but I think Eric Ten Hag might be going at the end of the season. I'm going to be honest. Fabrizio's got to be very careful in what he says. He's very, very well trusted, and things can change very quickly in football. But I've been doing these shows with Fabrizio for months now, and I've asked him about Eric Ten Hag every single time. And every single time he said... Ineos want to stick with Ten Hag, that's what I'm hearing. Ineos want to stick with Ten Hag, that is what I'm hearing. Today, we hear Ineos want to stick with Ten Hag, but it depends on results. And there is a shortlist of managers, and Nagelsmann is on there, Deserby's on there, Southgate's on there, Potter's on there. So, to be fair, he kind of batted off Graham Potter and said that was more of a niece. That was more of, a, of an appointment that we're going to make for Nice. But there is a shortlist of managers and they are thinking about making that decision. For now, they want to stick with Eric Ten Hag and they're putting out the word, for now, you know, it's, it's about results. They'll make a decision at the end of the season. And of course, they're going to say that. Man United still have an FA Cup semi-final to play. Man United could still have an FA Cup final to play. They're not going to be putting out there now that they're going to get a new manager. That, that wouldn't be the case. But I could tell a difference between the way Fabrizio said it a few weeks ago compared to now. And I do think, I do think that 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 we we, we potentially are going to get a new manager in the summer. I think it's very likely that we will actually, because just because all the reports coming out about Gout Southgate, there's no smoke without fire. Fabrizio confirmed there that he, he is somebody that, that they have a relationship with, and I've heard a lot behind the scenes about Southgate being a proper contender. He spoke about Nagelsmann being it being somebody and Deserby being somebody that they've spoken about as being potentially managers that could work under the Ineos regime and that's just been discussed internally. Yes, he said that they've spoken to nobody yet, 
But all it takes is you picking up the phone and having that conversation. They'll wait until the end of the season, in my opinion. But obviously, that's going to... That's going to entail whether what Nagelsmann's going to do. He's got an offer from the Germany Federation to continue as the Germany manager. That's one. Mark was speaking earlier this morning about De Zerbi's release clause. That's another thing that's kind of in the way. Southgate scares the life out of me, but I do think he is up there in the shortlist and in the candidates list. One, because he's not going to cost that much money. Two, he has an unreal relationship with Dan Ashworth. Like That scares me that that could happen. That could be the move. So... I think for now it makes sense for Ineos to be putting the word out that we're sticking with Ten Hag. You know, Ten Hag is the manager for now because there is an FA Cup there to play for. And that's really important that the team continue behind this manager until the end of the season of the chance of winning an FA Cup. But I would not be surprised that as soon as this season's over, we hear Ineos are now in talks to get a new manager. I won't be surprised because they haven't fully backed Ten Hag. And the difference between what Fabrizio said there compared to a few weeks ago, even a month ago, and from when Ineos first kind of came in at the start of January, the difference between then and now. Now we're talking about a manager shortlist. Now we're talking about, but it is a results-based business, so it could happen. That's kind of the difference there for me, and obviously things I've heard behind the scenes as well. I hope I'm, I hope I'm wrong. I really do hope I'm wrong, and I hope Eric Ten Hag does get the backing, because I want that. I want him to at least get one year under Ineos. I want him to see out his contract. I hope I'm wrong. But that's one thing I really can take away from this show. And like we said, you know, if Eric Ten Hag leaves, a lot of these players end up staying. And, and what happens there? Because Romano said, you know, we, we really like Evan Ferguson. If the price wasn't absolutely ridiculous, he'd be the striker I reckon would be going for this summer because I heard about us wanting to go for Evan Ferguson last summer, but Brighton, it was just completely off the table. We really like Joe Nevers, someone that we've been scouting for a long time. Like they're two players that I'd, I'd love at Man United, but we can't afford them in one summer. We can't afford it because of financial fair play. We need to sell dead wood to buy. And this is where this summer is going to be really interesting when it comes to Ineos have spoken about best in class, ruthless. Are we going to make that move? Are we going to do that this summer? I know it's not just FIFA career mode, you sell and you buy. I get that. There's agents involved, there's player welfare involved, there's contracts. I get that. But we should be moving Casemiro on this summer. We should be looking at, you know, McTominay, Maguire. Even though these two have been brilliant this season, are they our future at Manchester United? Lindelof. Is he the future at Manchester United? Aaron Wan-Bissaka, is he the future at Manchester United? These sort of fringe players where we don't know if the first team or not, we need to look at it and we need to evaluate and we need to make as much money as possible. Greenwood's obviously going to go, that'll be money in our pockets. Sancho, I assume, will go, but I'm not sure how much money we'll get for him. We need to get some money and we need to get some money for financial fair play because it scares me that a midfielder isn't our priority and it's just going to, if we have any money left, we need a standout midfielder. We need to stand out holding midfielder this summer. And if we don't get to do that because we don't have enough money and there's players here next season that I know are not good enough, I'm going to be frustrated with that because we love Jao Nevers. Man United love Jao Nevers. We won't be able to do that deal unless we sell massively because he's going to cost at least £100 million and we can't afford to spend that in one area because we've got, we've got so many holes all over our team that we need to look at. And Romano said at the end, Elise... Elise still, he thinks he's Man United, very, li very likely that Man United could sign him in the summer. He's proper up there as a transfer target. Where does that leave Anthony? Where does that leave Ahmad? And I look at that and I think, when I look at the fact that we're so in for Elise, that's another, that's another question mark for me over, are they... Do they really see a future with Ten Hag? Because Anthony's Ten Hag's guy on the right wing. Why would you be looking at Elise and, and you're going to go for Elise if Ten Hag was staying as manager? Is he just going to completely not use Anthony anymore after he, 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 you know, he loves him and spent a lot of money on him? A, a few things aren't making sense. And honestly, I'm leaning towards the fact now, just through le le reading between the lines and my gut feeling is I think Ineos will make a change of manager at the end of the season. I don't want them to. I want Ten Hag to be given the opportunity, but that's just my gut feeling looking at everything we've spoken to, spoken about here and just Romano's answer at the start. On the centre-back situation, let's be honest, it's going to be Tadebo. 40 million, we don't have much money to spend. Other centre-backs are looking at are way pricier. I, I, 
like I said, I'd love us to go for a Branthway. I think he's great. We're not going to spend 75, 80 million if that's what Everton ask, which I assume it'll be around that ballpark. I assume it'll be at least 60, 65. If not 70, 75, we're not going to spend that. Tadebo, Ineos connections, 40 million pounds. He's been on our list for a while. I think he's going to be our centre back signing. Going to be honest about that. Get in the chat what you guys think. Striker wise, we still don't know what we're doing. We've still not made a decision on whether we're going to, one, how much we're going to spend, and two, if we're going to go for someone experienced or going to go for someone young. Xerxes, I reckon he'll end up going to Milan, and Romano said he thinks that he thinks that he's too expensive for his age for Manchester United to go for. I think he'll be off the table. I know he's very well liked, but I just don't see Man United spending that much money on another young potential even though he does look like he's got a lot of potential. Sesko's an interesting one. He has a release clause, one to watch out for. Will they take that risk? Ivan Tony, spend the money. Proven goal scorer, proven um, target man. I think it'd be so beneficial for Rasmus Hoyland. And Romano said he's definitely an opportunity on the market. So we'll be interested to see what, what Manchester United do. I think they should go for an experienced striker. That's my opinion. I think we have to go for a midfielder and I think we have to sell to buy. It's so important. We've got to be ruthless this summer. But get in the chat what you think. A lot of people saying that they would like Sesco to come in. Uh, Sesco has a release clause, so that is an opportunity, but you never know. You never know if they're going to... Ha where the ceiling is in the Premier League. Ad adaptation, it's still a risk bringing Sesco in. It really is still a risk. And Aaron says, Bremer is absolutely a beast, would be great next to Martinez. I've spoken about this a lot. Bremer's gone completely under the radar and Romano said, literally said that on the show. Gleason Bremer, would he be my first choice? No. But I think if you're looking at someone to partner Lissandro Martinez, and you know, if a new manager comes in, they might not even want Lissandro Martinez at centre-back. They might want him as a left-back. They want, might want him as a central defensive midfielder. You don't know. Like Not every manager is going to want a five-foot-nine centre-half, even though I love him. So it all depends on whether Ten Hag stays as well. But if you're looking for someone to partner Martinez, which we should be, in my opinion, hopefully Martinez can stay fit. Injuries are concerning me, to be honest. Gleason Bremer is so complimentary to his attributes. He's physical, he's tall, he's quick, he's brilliant in the air. He's a Premier League, he's a Premier League defender. And that's what Romano's been saying on a, on a couple of shows as well. So I, wouldn't be, I would not be mad about Gleason Bremer. I think he's a good opportunity on the market. Tadebo, though, is 20 less million. Where can you spend that 20 million? That's your left back. That's your left back. So that's what Man United needs to be looking at this summer. But get in the comments what you think. It was a good update from Romano. I definitely would keep an eye on the Ten Hag thing because there's been a shift in that. There's been a shift in that, in my opinion. That's just me reading between the lines. But thank you, everyone, for watching. Thanks for all the lovely chats in as well. I've seen them all as, as Romano was speaking. I really appreciate that. And, yeah. Thank you, everyone. I've got a, I've got a chat in, actually, a super chat here from Jurgen Klopp. Is it Jurgen himself? Would love to see Southgate in charge of United. Come off. Come off it. Come off it. The fact is, when Liverpool fans want, want you to get a certain manager in, that's when, that's when you know it's an issue. Why are Liverpool not looking at Southgate? There's big reasons. If we get Southgate, I will... I, will, I don't know what I'll do. But I'll be very, very, very disappointed. I'm just trying to hope it doesn't happen. But there is a very big possibility that c that can happen in the summer. Be prepared, everyone. Be prepared is all I'd say. Make sure you smash a like on the video for, Bri for, for Fabrizio. We're going to be bringing us much more updates throughout the summer. Hopefully we'll get some clarity on a few things in the upcoming weeks, moving towards the summer transfer window. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Really appreciate you guys. Mark will be back with the evening show later. Have a lovely Monday and have a lovely week, everyone. I'll see you on the next one.